بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله الحمد لله عدد ما في السماوات والأرض الحمد لله والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفاه الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل ظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعدلون ونشكره ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فهو مهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن حبيبنا محمدا صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وجاهد في سبيل الله عز وجل وعبد ربه تعالى حتى أتاه يقين وأما بعض My brothers and sisters in Islam I begin recommending for you but firstly for my own sinful self to have the proper regard the proper awe in the proper consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning to have proper taqwa for Allah as he deserves, to obey him and not to disobey him, to remember him and not forget him, and to be thankful to him and not be ungrateful. And beware, brothers and sisters, of the day of reckoning in which parents were run from children and children were run from parents. And death is a creation which we will all visit. Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib had a statement, in al mawta talibun hafif. Surely death is an eager seeker. Death is a talib, it doesn't give up. Death is determined. And no matter how much we think we can run away from death, death is going to catch us. So remember that day when we shall meet death and death's angel, Malakum Maut. Today's Brief topic, brothers and sisters in Islam, relates to a subject that I believe is timely and especially for those of us in particular, not to exclude anyone, but in particular those of us who are of African descent. But in relationship to Muslims in general, and this is to differentiate between healthy affinity towards one's group in contrast with blameworthy tribalism. Our deen, deen of Islam, the Quran, and the Prophet وسلم, did not come to dismantle our ethnicities, our tribal affiliations, but to place those in the proper perspective. And as it is blameworthy for one to stick too much to their group and to support their group simply because they're of the same lineage or look like them, it is also blameworthy to have no connection to your people or to actually stick towards people who don't look like you, even supporting them in wrong against your own people. In the hadith narrated by Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal in his Musnad and in Sunan ibn Majah, some of the scholars of hadith say this hadith is weak, though it is strengthened by another hadith in Sunan Abi Dawood. May Allah's mercy be upon them all. And perhaps we need a class even to clarify that all hadith that are considered da'if or weak does not mean the Prophet did not say such and such or that they cannot be acted upon. 
This in itself needs clarification. But this hadith that is correct in meaning according to our scholars and has been strengthened and we can say that the meaning comes to that which is called a good hadith or we say hadith hasan. Hadith hasan. The Sahaba asked a question. Ya Rasulullah, amil al-asabiyya to an yuhibu rajul al-qawma? O Messenger of Allah, is it from al-asabiyya? Is it from blameworthy tribalism? And racism comes out of tribalism, by the way. Al-usuriyya comes out of al-asabiyya, or it's also called ta'asib al-ilqi. Right, it's another word in Arabic of like ethnocentric bigotry or racism. Is it from tribalism or racism that a man shows love for his people, for his home, for people in his ethnicity or for his group? Is this blameworthy? Is this wrong? He says, the Prophet وسلم, said, no, it is not blameworthy or racist that you show love for your people. But it is blameworthy ethnocentricity, it's blameworthy tribalism or blameworthy racism that you help your people in a dhulm. What a dhulm mean? A dhulm has two shades of meaning. It's wrongdoing and also can mean oppression. From the perspective of the Sharia or the sacred law, from the first means, it means to take something outside of its proper place. This is dhulm. So in other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given all people certain human rights. You could call this hukuk al-ibad or hukuk al-insan, irrespective of skin color, irrespective of lineage, where one was born. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave all human beings certain intrinsic human rights and dignity. Right? Human rights come from God, they don't come from governments, in other words. Even the founders of this country, as flawed as they were, Thomas Jefferson wrote that in the Declaration of Independence. Isn't that right? We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. So even this guy, who himself was a racist, wrote in the Declaration of Independence that rights don't come from the state, they don't come from the king, they don't come from the president, they come from God, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is not blameworthy for a group of people to show love towards their people, to have affinity towards their people. This is the point that I'm getting to. But that's not blind allegiance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Hujurat in the 13th ayah, we all know this ayah. But many times Muslims only try to reflect this or talk about this in the name of diversity. But it has more meaning than just recognizing other people in diversity. He subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhan nas, inna khalaqinakum min dhakarin wa untha. Oh people, surely we created you from a single male, meaning Adam alayhi salam, and Hawa, a single female, alayhi salam. So we have common parents, Adam and Eve. Then he subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and we made you into different nations and tribes and ethnic groups in order that you may get to know one another. Built into the meaning of this, brothers and sisters in Islam, that in order to get to know other people, one must first know themselves. You must first know your own people, your own history, and to have a healthy respect for that. In other words, you don't get to know other people and respect and get to uplift other people to the neglect of yourselves. 
But then he superhandled what the Allah then says, it's not really about race, it's not really about your lineage, it's not about your skin color. He then brings it back to the metaphysical reality in the akramakum in But surely the most honorable of you with Allah it had nothing to do with how much money you have, it had nothing to do with whether you're Arab or you're not Arab, or whether you have dark skin or light skin, or straight hair or kinky hair, or even gender. Male and female, the most honorable of you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those of you who have the most taqwa, and this relates to those who have belief and put that belief into action. We just aren't a people of lip service. We just don't say we declare shahada and we are automatically saved from punishment starting in this life and then in the next. Imam Malik an, made this very clear. El imanu qawlun wa amal. May Allah be well pleased with the Imam of Dara Hijra. Iman, true faith, meaning El imanu el haqiqi. True faith is in speech and in deed. We just don't say, oh, I'm a Muslim now, I'm saved. Maybe some other religions have that understanding that's not our understanding. So the most honorable of us with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those of us who have the most regardfulness for him. So yes, we should have a healthy appreciation for our cultures and our backgrounds. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't say to the Arabs when they came into the, the Islam, Oh, Beni Khazraj, you're no longer a Khazraji. Oh, Beni Aus, you're no longer from Aus. Oh, Quraysh, you are no longer Qurayshi. They had nothing to do with Islam. Oh, people of Yemen, you being from Yemen means nothing. He never said that. As a matter of fact, to the contrary, we have the honorable companion, Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, radiallahu anh. And we know what happened with the issue of Khandaq and the treason of Beni Khurayda. His tribe, Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, radiallahu anh, had, um, they had a, an agreement or an allegiance with his tribe. So in this, in this tribe, someone would be a khalif of another tribe, right? So basically, you have one tribe, and they made an alliance with another tribe, and it's kind of like they became like one union. This was something that the Arabs did back in the day. So this Jewish tribe, they had affiliation with this other tribe that Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad was from, in Medina. After the issue of Khandaq and the treason of Bani Qurayda, they were looking for an arbiter to judge between the matter. Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad was chosen to be an arbiter between them, not the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what happened? When Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad came in to, to the men of Ban when they were sitting down, what did he say? He said to them, stand for your Sayyid. Stand up for your Sayyid. Stand up for your leader, the leader amongst your people. You say you respect him, he's amongst your people. You want him to be a judge. Stand up and so respect him, the leadership that you recognize. O Beni Koreva. Sheikh Ali, Suleiman Ali, may Allah preserve him. He's one of my teachers. May Allah preserve him. Most of us know Sheikh Ali. He's from the Hausa tribe. He's from Ghana, but his family migrated from Kano, from northern Nigeria, to Ghana, from the Hausa people. This is Hausa we. He was just in Ghana. He was at last, uh, two weeks ago, he was at the Grand Masjid in Accra, and I've seen this masjid. Chief Imam Sheikh Osman Sharabutu, Hafizullah Ta'ala, 102 years old. He didn't even wear glasses. He has his mind, has entire Quran memorized, uh, Muwatta, Bukhari, has all these things memorized. Great ulama in Africa. You don't have to even look over uh, to the Arab world. You have all these great 
Ulama are right there. Ulama just aren't in Arabia. 102 years old. Something very interesting there. This is the respect that people show for their leadership that we need to learn here. The first soft in the musalla was ulama. The second soft that was there was the chiefs of the different sub-tribes. You have the Asante, the Dagomba, the Hausa, the Fulani. All the chiefs of the leaders won the second soft. Why? Because when you honor the leader of a people, you honor the people themselves. Do we honor our leaders? Do we honor the people amongst us? Or will we support other people, even when they're wrong, over deference towards our own people? Unfortunately, be it a byproduct of chattel slavery, a byproduct of colonialism of Africa, or even being byproducts of 9-11, somehow or another we think that other people who don't look like us, including disbelievers, somehow their water is cooler than ours. Or Sheikh Fulan bin Fulan, not even Sheikh Fulan bin Fulan, Someone that comes from a particular country may not have ijazah in one text but speaks Arabic and says one thing, and maybe you give that more credit than your own imam here who's a graduate of Azhar. Because he looks too much like you, so you take him for granted. The first step in fixing a problem is admitting that you have the problem. And Nanamu Tawbah, this is the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sallam. Remorse is repentance. Repentance, or Tawbah means more than repentance. It's translated as repentance. It means turning directions. You're facing one direction, and you turn to go to a different direction to do things a better way or to improve. What I'm doing is not working. What I'm doing is the best way. I need to turn and adjust myself to go into a better direction. This is, this is perhaps a better way to explain Tawbah than just repentance. And in a nadam, or remorse, one has to have ilm or knowledge of that before they actually can have remorse. So I'm saying this, my brothers and sisters in Islam. And we have to be truthful about this. We have to deal with this, this issue. We still deal with it as a people. Even in post 9-11 reality and what's going on in the news, we have nothing to apologize about for what's going on halfway across the world that we feel like we have to explain ourselves or to water down what our deen says in our sacred terms, like Sharia. Sharia is in the Quran. Sharia is a good word. I'm not going to say I don't want any Sharia. We have to explain the proper application of Sharia. Yeah, I want some Sharia and I want some Jihad on Nafs. I want all of that. I'm going to explain it and we're going to live it as law abiding citizens in this land, calling people to accept La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah alayhi abdul salam. I apologize for nothing and neither should you to be, to, to be accepted by someone out in Gross Point or someone out in West Bloomfield doesn't like you anyway. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us healthy love for each other. May Allah azza wa jal give us knowledge of self. May Allah azza wa jal protect us from the enemies from within and from without. Or inside and outside. Aqulu kali hadha astaghfirullah wa lakum astaghfirullah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله القائل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وأقلوا صلاة وتموا تسليم على سيدنا ونبينا وأسواتنا محمد المصطفى وعلى آله الأصفياء 
وصحبه الأرقياء والتابعين لهم بخير وإسان إلى يوم الجزاء وعما بعد اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعفنا في من نفيت وتولنا في من تواليت وبلغ لنا في ما أخطيت وقنا شر ما قديت إنك تقدي ولا يقدع عليك إنه لا يذل من وليت ولا يعز من أديت تبركت ربنا وتعاليت ولك الحمد على ما قديت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك نستغفرك ونتوب إليك نستغفرك ونتوب إليك ونؤمن بك ونتوكل عليك اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الفقر إلى إليك اللهم عز الإسلام ومسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام ومسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام ومسلمين اللهم أصل أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم فرج عن أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ارحم أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا دائما أبدا اللهم اكفر المؤمنين والمؤمنات ومسلمين ومسلمات الأحياء منهم وأموات ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهبنا من لدنك الرحمة إنك أنت وهاب اللهم صل إخوانا في أفغانستان واليمن وسوريا وفلسطين ونيجيريا والصومال والعراق وليبيا ونيجيريا ونيجر اللهم صل إخوانا في كل مكان اللهم صل إخوانا في كل مكان اللهم صل إخواننا في كل مكان برحمتك يا أحمد الرحيمين سبحان ربك بالعزة عما يصفون والسلام 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 على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أقيم الصلاة